We've had our Herman Miller Mirror 2 for around three years, so I've had a ton of time to really get to know the chair. So I'm gonna share my opinions on what I think about it after using it for around three years. Now, the biggest difference that we've seen with the Mirror 2 is going to be the price. With almost a 40% price increase since we last had a chance to visit the chair, this used to be one of our go-to recommendations for people looking for a high-end chair under that $1,000 mark, being around $959 fully loaded when we previously reviewed it, but now it's gonna be over $1,300 for the same model, I believe $1,315. So certainly a much more expensive chair, and make sure to stick around to the end of the video. I'm gonna share my personal opinion on whether I think the chair is worth it at the new price point. When getting into the chair itself, we're first gonna look at the seat, starting with the mesh. Now this isn't gonna be the highest quality mesh, not up there with the 8Z Pellicle from the Aeron, but it's close. Some of the highest quality mesh that we've seen, aside from the Aeron's mesh, it's nice to the touch, it's not super coarse, it's not gonna be uncomfortable on your skin, and it does have a good amount of flex to it. I will say that even though it is pretty flexible, and has good elasticity. It is gonna be more of a firm sitting experience, so certainly more firm than your typical padded chair unless we get into those really rock hard foam seats. But overall, definitely a more firm sitting experience. I will say that you're also going to get this hard edge problem like most mesh chairs, not quite as pronounced as the Aeron with the fully raised bucket seat edges. But if you get outside of this area and you feel these edges, it will be a bit uncomfortable. So that's certainly something to keep in mind. You definitely wanna be narrow enough to fit in the chair without going on the seat edges. The chair fits me fine, about 5'9", 180 pounds. But if you're much wider than me, then that might be an issue. When looking at the adjustments for the seat, you're gonna get seat height range. It's gonna go really low, and then you can see it also goes really high. This is gonna be a chair that covers that fifth to 95th percentile, so it's gonna fit most of the population. And then one thing that I do like about this mesh seat that is very, very unique to the Mira as compared to most mesh seat designs is this flex front. And this acts as a seat depth adjustment so that you can adjust how far the front edge of the seat is to the back of your legs. And this is not something that you can do on the Aeron chair, so this is gonna be one major advantage that the Mira has against the Aeron specifically. The Mirror 2 has a very unique backrest with the plastic perforated design here. Now, I will say that it is plastic, it's flexible, and it is breathable, so it's not gonna be a problem for sweating and that type of thing, but it is gonna be pretty hard. I mean, when I knock on it, it's just hard plastic. So for me, after a while, it did become a little bit uncomfortable just leaning against something that's hard all the time. They do have an option called a butterfly back and I believe it's around 80 bucks, and that'll just give you a thin layer of padding. I would maybe suggest that to people that are gonna be a little bit hesitant to get a hard plastic back, but I will say that it is pretty comfortable. You're gonna get good flexibility, so if you wanna shift and lean and stretch in the chair, it's more, more conducive to that as compared to other mesh chairs like the Aeron, that's gonna have a much more rigid frame. I also do like that it has a nice natural curve, so it supports you all the way from your lower back, up through the top of your shoulders, and I like the high back design as compared to the Aeron, because you're not gonna have the problem of a bar going across your shoulders or your upper back that can become uncomfortable when you're stretching or moving around in the chair. I will say that the Mirror 2 does have a pretty unique curve at the bottom of the backrest. Um, it almost juts out right here at your sacral region. And that's meant to provide good support, but I have heard comments of people not liking that specifically because it can kind of be annoying if you're using a belt. I haven't experienced that problem myself, but it's definitely something to consider that other people have talked about. Now, my favorite thing about the Mirror 2's backrest and something that I would highly recommend that you get is the upgraded fully adjustable lumbar support system because you're gonna get a massive adjustability range, both height range, you can see it goes really high up to basically your mid back, all the way down to almost your sacral region. And then it also gives you these individual knobs to adjust the tension on either side of the lumbar if you would prefer it to be a little more tense on one side than the other, you can crank one side down, leave it open, make them both tense, whatever you prefer. You're just gonna have a ton of control over the lumbar in this chair specifically as compared to most ergonomic chairs. 
The arms on the Mirror 2 are going to be top tier, especially when you upgrade to the fully adjustable package, which I would highly recommend. This is going to give you four-way adjustment. And you're going to get a massive height adjustment range, a very solid depth range. They pivot in both directions. The one point that's a little bit missing, in my opinion, is going to be the width range. And so what I mean is you can see that when I make the arms as narrow as possible, when I put my elbows on them, you can see that they're pitched outward a little bit, more like this than straight down hanging, which is what you want. So this isn't the best position for pure ergonomics, and this might be a problem for those of you that are gonna be about my size or maybe a little bit smaller, just because you're not gonna have the best arm positioning with the width that they allow. But I'm a huge fan of the arm caps themselves, very soft to the touch, probably some of the most comfortable arm pads right up there with the Aeron. And they also have this cool waterfall design where they're pitched forward like this. And this is designed so that you can really pull up as close to your desk as possible, so you can have a bunch of different positions that you can use the chair in. One of the biggest highlights of the Mirror 2 is going to be its recline function. The Mirror 2 has what Herman Miller calls the harmonic tilt system, which in my opinion is one of the most comfortable recline systems out there, very similar to the Embody and the Aeron. And you'll see that when I recline, I gotta unlock it first. It's just a very smooth, deep, big range of recline. And this is probably one of the most comfortable recline actions that you can have out of all of the chairs that we've tested. And this is gonna be one of the chairs that you can get this recline in at a lower price point than say the Aeron or the Embody. So very comfortable recline. You're gonna get three tilt limiting positions just like the Aeron. So this lever here will control that. You can go fully upright, you can go to a midpoint, or you can just open it up fully and have the full range to recline in. And you also have a forward seat tilt option if you do upgrade to that. For those crazies out there that like to work in this forward position, you have that option available. And then the last thing that you're gonna get is a super responsive tension control. I'm not a huge fan of how massive the knob is. I think it's kind of ugly, but it does work very well. A couple turns and you can really dial in the tension, which is not like most chairs. So big fan of all of the adjustments and the motion of the recline. When looking at the overall quality, design, build of the Mira 2, this is certainly going to be a very high-end chair, especially considering all of the chairs that we've seen. It's not going to be quite as high as something like the Embody or the Aeron, but it's not quite as expensive as those chairs. But this chair, still, still very high-end, made by the same designers as the Cosm Studio 7.5 out of Germany. All of the components are going to be top tier, and they really put a ton of effort into making sure that not only was the chair very functional, but it looked really good too, and from all angles. I do think that they could have done a little bit better job with some of the knobs, like I commented on earlier, but overall, a very well-designed, very nice looking chair and you're going to get the policies to back it up with in my opinion the best warranty in the business 12 years covering everything on the chair and you're also going to get a solid return policy Herman Miller does charge return shipping now but you're still gonna get 30 days to try it and they still will give you a full refund on everything there and a big bonus with the mirror 2 is that it does arrive fully assembled so you don't have to invest any time putting the chair together in around three years, the cost on the Mira 2s jumped from $959 up to $1,315 for the fully loaded version. But I still feel that the Mira 2 is worth it for that price point. You're getting a top tier chair from a top tier manufacturer, great adjustability and amazing policies. If we simply break it down on a per year cost basis, you're paying around $100 a month to use a really high end chair. And I do feel you're probably gonna outlast the warranty simply because of how many Mira 1s we see being still sold on the used furniture market. If you're looking for a head-to-head -head comparison of the Mira 2 against the Aeron, check out this video.